Munchkin Cast, the weekly sports anime fan podcast. My name is Matt, and joining me today is a very special guest, Matt. That's me. Hey, welcome on to the show, buddy. Always glad to have you on. Good to be here, even though I have to talk about Minami Kamakura Girls High School Cycling Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a uh, this was an interesting experience for us. Yeah. Um, it's a euphemism, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when we started this season, um, so my expectation for the show going into it was that it was going to be, uh, we were just coming off of Long Riders, I did not have high expectations for it, but a lot of the promotional art made it look like it could have been like a, like a girl-centric Yawamushi pedal, which I would have been fine with. Yeah, I was much in the same boat. Yeah, like, like maybe we were just kind of desperate for something to not be long riders again. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, one of one of the, our frustrations with long riders is it didn't feel like it had a focus. You know, they just sort of like rode around. It didn't have the sports, sports anime focus of you know, oh, we're training for the inter high. Oh, we're training for this tournament. Oh, we're gonna beat our rival. You know, there wasn't any competitiveness to it, which is fine if you can do it well um but we were hoping to see that from an anime centered on girls because oftentimes we see boys who are training to be the best and girls who just want to develop their friendships and that you know reinforces some unfortunate stereotypes so we were hoping that this would be one about you know girls who really are trying hard to be the best and want to win in competition and you're like okay it's a high school cycling club they're gonna go to the inter high no <laughs> not even close <laughs> no no this was in a weird somehow this series ended up not being like in many ways it's very similar to long riders but in like even more stranger ways it's not right um so just real quick before we keep going any further i'm just gonna summarize the show real quick uh, Hiromi has recently moved to Kamakura, uh, and she decides to ride her bike to school, even though she doesn't know how to move the pedals. Um, along the way, she meets somebody, a girl by the name of Tomoe, uh, and the two of them develop a friendship, and then they go to, they find out that they're in the same class, and they meet up with their teacher, who also is a psych who is also like riding bikes. One day when they're going out on a bike ride with their teacher, they encounter two other girls, completely by coincidence, by the name of Fuyune and Higa. And then they meet up with them, one thing leads to another, and then they end up forming a school club about biking. Kind of indefinite biking just sort of like we're gonna make a club about bikes but we don't know what it's gonna be centered on and then the rest of the show is effectively about them trying to get this club actually set up right um so i just i want to just throw this right off the bat here i think this series is worse than long riders i don't know how that happened <laughs> well it feels Long Riders, for its many, many faults, had some amount of ambition for what it wanted to show and what it wanted to be. This feels like a show that's almost entirely devoid of ambition. Right. Like, this feels like it's a show that... It was really funny, because before we had watched the show, uh, we read an interview, actually, with the director of the show who had stated that he wanted to make sure that the show did not feel like a promotional video for the city of Kamakura. And our takeaway from the very first episode was that he failed spectacularly at that. Um, like, there are so many strange lines in the show that are about, that are like, nobody in reality would say this, but they would only, like, this is something that would only have, like, people who are trying to advertise something would say. Right. Like, in the very... I, I remember the line that got us, I remember, was from the very first episode, and one of... And I believe it was Hiromi who states, uh, man, I can't believe... The, like, this is one of Kamakura's scenic beach views. Yeah, exactly. 
It's like... What high schooler the, talks like that? Yeah, what high schooler talks like that? That's not inside an ad. Like, <laughs> the only reason to say something like that is to... Is to effectively, like, try and sell the city to people. Like, hey, don't you want to come visit here? I distinctly remember in that first episode as well. Any time that they're walking out on the school grounds, the cherry blossoms are just raining down <laughs> as, like, as like an idyllic symbol of springtime. Yeah, totally. It, and, but, yeah. I, in a way, I, I uh, just want to jump in real quick and say... Um, I don't. Th- I still don't think it was intentionally construed as an advertisement. I think, like, to some degree, Kamakura. It seems like a pretty scenic place. So they oh, yeah. they obviously set it there for a reason. The original author did, um, and I think you know he's just sort of trying to capitalize because one of one of the goals of the story seems to be letting readers know that it's totally possible for them to become cyclists too. That You know, sort of lower the barrier to entry that, you know, cycling is for everyone. Everyone can have fun with it. Look at all these great things you can only do if you cycle. Um, which is fine and basic, was, was a, another similar theme to Long Riders. Um, but so the way the way they end up doing that is by showing all the cool places you could ride in Kamakura if only you knew how to ride a bike, you know. Yeah. Um the problem with that is that the series doesn't actually have any sense of what it wants to do with these girls. Um they the way this club I I glanced over it during the summary the way this club is formed is so unbelievably convoluted. Um, so basically, in the second episode, Hiromi Tomoe and, Sh- and their teacher Shiki are out on a ride. I believe it's Shiki, like, Shiki falls asleep. Tomoe decides to, like, stay with her. And then Hiromi, like a child, basically gra- uh, wants to ride on Tomoe's, like, you know bike and when she like you know she just kind of wants to ride around for a little bit somehow she gets lost yeah and then meanwhile uh, a character by the name of fuyune who's apparently a rich girl is out with her butler yeah. like they're driving around she's being chauffeured around town she see like they're stuck in traffic she sees somebody riding a bike not even Hiromi, just a random cyclist and she's like oh that would be easier to get around town. I would like one bike, please, butler. Yeah. And so they decide to go get a b- bike. And then we find out that Higa is just a cyclist. Like, she was just riding by the... She was just kind of riding... She's just sort of riding around town. And she ends up at this cafe, which is where everybody ends up meeting because there's a bike store right nearby. Mm-hmm. And once they all meet there, they go... Hey, let's go ride over to that island. And I guess that means they're f- best friends now. Well, yeah. I mean, they realize, hey, we're all in the same high school. Let's hang out. And then they just keep running into each other. They run into each other again the next day at the club fair. And they're like, you know what? Um, and uh, Fiune's grandma happens to be the principal. Okay, well, let's just follow her. And so they follow Fiune to meet her grandma, and her grandma, where is she? She's in the old club room for the cycling club from when she was in high school. And they say, well, you know, here we are with your grandma in the club room. Why don't we become the cycling club? Because we have ridden bikes, and we are here together now. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And they make this whole big deal about how tight their friendship is based on this ride. And it's like, I you never get a real sense of why these girls are, like, so close to one another. Uh-huh. Uh, like, they just decide... It's just like... This takes this series takes place within the course of, I want to say, a month. Yeah, more or less. Uh, yeah. More or less, yeah. And it's like... But these girls just, like, in the third or fourth episode, I think it's actually the third episode, uh, they have a bike race with the captain of the swimming club. 
so that they can keep Higa on their team. And, or, like, you know, they want to... Because they're going to, like, race so that Higa can, like, stay on the team so she won't be sc- uh, scouted out... By the swim by club. By the swimming club. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And it's like... Why do you girls care? You don't even know this girl. Well, yeah. She barely has done anything. And also, you know, that, that episode becomes sort of a template for the rest of the show where Hiromi ends up losing that race... Uh, but it doesn't have any consequences because, you know, the swim club's like, oh, well, we can't actually make anyone join the swim club, of course. So even though the whole reason they were racing was to keep, he decide whose team Higa was going to be on, uh, Higa's just like, well, you know, I didn't want to be on the swim club. So, uh, <laughs> you know, a- again, everything in this show, they, they just do it and it either has no consequences or if there are problems, they get overcome immediately by coincidence. Um, right. And that's that's the the frustrating thing is that like there's no problem that takes more than one episode to solve and there's no problem that is solved through actual sacrifice or creative thinking it always just sort of falls into place like um when they have this issue where they want to go on a ride in in a nearby city but in order to do so they have to you know take the train to get there uh, right. and so they're like, oh, but we can't take our bikes on the train. We have to put them in travel bags, but we don't have the money for travel bags. And also one of our team members doesn't have a road bike. And they're like, well, oh, and, and I said, oh, okay, well, that seems like several problems you'll have to co- overcome. But then almost immediately their team advisor, Shiki, just says, oh, yeah, by the way, you got some funding even though you're not a club they made a special exception to get you some funding (laughs) so you can rent a bike and if you rent a bike the bike store owner will just throw in some travel bags because reasons uh so looks like you're fine so like why present these problems if you're gonna solve them through no effort just say they have travel bags. Like, don't make it a, make it a conflict. <laughs> yeah, then. exactly. Like, why is this even a plot point? Like, why is the show doing everything in its power to make sure that these girls get, like, to basically make these girls feel as entitled as possible, <laughs> almost? Yeah, totally. Like, you could literally, res- like, resolve this by saying they used money out of pocket because they managed to get it. Or, yeah, or Fiune bought it. Yeah, you know what? Fiona's rich anyway. Like, just say she did it. Yeah. But it's like, it feels like this is a show that feel that feels like it's trying... Because it, it, there was something you, interesting you brought up earlier, which was like the fact that this show doesn't really feel like it, it, it has really any idea of... Like, it, it doesn't have any ambition. I almost feel like the opposite, because I feel like it thinks it's telling a really incredible story here Mm. like there's just this such of like sense of like purpose to everything to make it seem like these girls have like gone through this wonderful journey together Mm -hmm. and it's like these girls have like we don't get any sense of who any of these girls are except vaguely of Hiromi because she might actually have brain damage um right (laughs) Because because she starts off the series being like, oh, what's up, Heddle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then by the end of the show, she's like the second strongest rider. But even though you've seen no actual development or training or anything, she just decides she's athletic. And then right. is. Um, you know, more so than all of the, the, you know, the two other members who have ridden extensively beforehand. Right. And it's like, these girls, and it's like, it feels like these girls have like... like Everything about the series makes it feel like these... They are constantly trying to be like, oh, well, the girls were in this race, and then they went on this uh, sightseeing uh, journey, and then they did this relay. It's like, haven't these girls done so much? It's like, no! No, they haven't! They've barely done anything. Yeah. Like, but it's like, it's supposed to be like, oh, haven't these girls have had, like, an incredible experience together? And it's like, what was gained from anything that has happened in this series beyond hey riding a bike was a little fun Mm -hmm. and it's like there's nothing to anything but it what it's so determined to constantly tell us or like i I think one of the major 
uh, one of the big things I remember was that uh, in one of the very last episodes when the girls are, like, just decide to try and start racing these girls who are riding by them for really no reason outside of the fact that one of them has the mentality of a, has, like, the attention span of a puppy. Sure. And uh, basically decides, like, hey, I want to go race them now. And there's, like, this very, like... Like, there's this very, like, intense pop rock playing in the background. Like, oh, yeah, these girls are going to get catch up with them. Like, isn't this a fun race? It's like, man, isn't this race intense? It's like, where did any of this come from? Yeah, why is any of this happening? Why is this even happening in the first place? I don't care that they're racing these, like... Random people. Other- <laughs> yeah, these total strangers. Yeah. Like, I don't care about that. Why are you trying to, like... Like, why does this music feel like it's trying to force me to feel like... This is a really powerful moment. Also, that's a weird thing to do in a, to a person. Like, if you get passed on your bicycle, you shouldn't just chase the person. That's weird. Yeah, that's totally weird and strange. And frankly, those gir- uh, the girls that they were chasing took that re- unreasonably well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have because... been like, this is uncomfortable. Are you a threat? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to hurt me? Exactly. Um, so the the person that did that uh, was a very special girl <laughs> named Sandy McDougal. Uh, would you like to give me a quick breakdown on the epic tale of Sandy McDougal? Okay, so uh, what had happened was I accidentally got a little bit spoiled about the series when I was doing a little bit of research for it, mm-hmm. uh, like throughout, and I had read online about this character by like she was always implied in the opening that they were going to get a wet, like an American girl or a foreign girl essentially yeah. to join the team. And sure, uh, I had accidentally read online that her name was Sandy McDougal. Yeah. And throughout the entire series, we were constantly waiting for Sandy McDougal to show up. It's just, just a great name. It's a great name. It's such a great... It's like, it's just... It sounds like it could be a real name, but it's, <laughs> but it's just slightly ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you're never actually going to meet somebody who's who goes by that name, but it's such a... But it sounds like it could actually be a real, like, English name. Yeah, it, it's like what it's what Japanese people assume Americans are named. <laughs> right. And in this case, they it feels like they almost got it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, and it's like, so we were kind of waiting. It's so like, maybe the moment when Sandy joins the team is going to be where the series has its big turnaround. And while we were watching it, we saw, like, it was getting to be about, like, episode... Six, and we were like really confused by the fact that like we still hadn't gotten one of the main ca- cast members. Now, during around this point, they had started this big, uh, this big evening race with like this big, like, enti- like this big race that was included the entire school. And uh, there was this character by the name of Kuma who was exceedingly annoying because it was a character who wore a bear suit and just kept shouting Kuma. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of like, you know, we were pretty uh, put off by the fact that, you know, Kuma was a thing. And we were constantly wondering, it's like, how do we still not have Sandy come episode 8? And that's when we had the horrifying realization uh, that Sandy, in fact, was Kuma. Hmm. And I think that pretty much there set the tone for Sandy. And it's kind of weird, too, because I did say that none of the girls have any real personality. But that was a bit misleading, because... Sandy feels almost alien in the show because while all the other girls have are effectively like blank slates, Sandy has almost too much personality. Like she's like, her perky because she's incredibly perky. She's incredibly uh like she's incredibly she's like hyper energetic and it's to the point where it's incredibly off-putting. Mhm. Well, it just, it seems pointless and directionless. Right. Like, you you have all these girls who effectively are the same person with Hiromi being slightly dumber than the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you have Sandy, who's like, who almost feels like she's ripped from a different series. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and it's just like, cons- and not only that, she has this really obnoxious accent. Yeah, again, uh, like, the way, the way I described it on our weekly episode was... It sounds like a Japan a Japanese person impersonating an American speaking Japanese. Yeah. 
<laughs> because, I mean, that is effectively what it is. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, but it, she just throws in random bits of English. Yeah. And it's like, first, first of all, for some reason, all the girls can actually understand her when she does this. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> they just never address that. <laughs> they just never really address that. But it's like, she's just, she's so sweet and she's just so obnoxious. <laughs> In how she's presented, and I think what really hurts is that uh, there's this whole scene in, like, where Hiromi's taking a bath, and they make this joke about how Sandy doesn't understand, like, boundaries, or, uh, like, how they're not, how, you know, you're not supposed to join people in the bath, essentially. Uh, and it's just, it, it kind of paints her in a very, like, unsympathetic light. Well, yeah, I mean, she's just an idiot, so I don't know if this is supposed to be a stereotype about westerners or about blondes or you know <laughs> but at, at the same time even though she's like barely a person in the way they you know uh talk about her and the way she acts by the end of the show these girls are completely torn up about the prospect of sandy moving back to america because they're such close friends even though right. they've been hanging out for you know three episodes or in <laughs> in the show's timeline like a couple weeks yeah, exactly. Like, why is Sandy, like, the most important character, despite the fact that she has been in the series for the least amount of time? And wh at the same time, why do I feel like I know Sandy better than any of these girls? <laughs> yeah, because she actually has a personality trait, even if it's ridiculous. Even it's ridiculous and stupid. And for the record, I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to be like, oh, you know, those, you know, how dare they try and make fun of us Westerners or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, who cares? But it's, it's just, yeah, I don't really care. It's just the fact that she's just such an obnoxious character and then that's compounded on top of that. Sure, yeah. Like, it's not that, like, it, it's not that there's anything wrong with making fun of Americans. It's just that it was lazy and kind of random things to make fun of like the things they're making fun of is that she doesn't know that privacy exists which okay <laughs> sure um and she knows how to ride a horse because she's <laughs> because from everybody Col in colorado yeah. knows how to ride horses she's Matt. from colorado and they don't use cars they just ride horses like what are these stereotypes <laughs> um <laughs> I want to take a turn and address one one point that I really hoped would get resolved, but just never did. Uh, so the title of the show is Manami Girls High School, uh, Manami Kamakura Girls High School Cycling Club. Right. Uh, but they make a very big point when they form the club. They're like, oh, should we call ourselves the Cycling Club? And they're like, no, because like, we don't just cycle. We also, you know just want to be around bikes we want to learn more about bikes so let's just call ourselves the bicycle club and they say okay and i'm like this wait what that's not the name of the show <laughs> um but they just go with it and the entire show they have the title be the cycling club and then in the show they talk about being the bicycle club which I know those are different words because they make a specific point of bringing it up in the show and then they never address it again. So the <laughs> title the, the title itself is different than their own club name. Like, it, why? Maybe, I get the sense maybe, because I do know that this is based off of a manga. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, maybe in the manga they end up just going into being a straight cycling club because these girls do do an awful lot of actual racing. Yeah. So maybe the way that this series goes is that it's supposed to turn into a cycling club. But again, they didn't get far enough in this season <laughs> they, to actually bring any of that up. Right. So it was just brought up kind of randomly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, speaking of random things, if you don't mind, could you uh, bring up the, the epic tale of Corone? And by that uh, I mean literally her epic tale. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think when, when this series started out, we were kind of having some fun with it. Like, it was like it was clearly bad, but it yeah. felt kind of... It was pretty campy in a way that, you know, we hadn't really had yet, where, like, it seemed kind of weirdly unaware of its own stupidity. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there... Uh, around the time that changed for us was with... Cor was the introduction of Corone, who's the bike store owner... And the whole thing with her is that she looks like she's five years old, 
and dresses in cat ears and a cat tail. And she constantly goes around insisting that she's an adult, because she is. But she is, a fa- but she constantly dresses like a grade schooler. She even mm-hmm. wears, like, like a little kid, like, bloomers, and even wears, like, a cape around that. And there's just something very gross about this portrayal of that type of character. Mm-hmm. Uh, like... Because she's basically falling into a Lolita stereotype, and it's, like, uh, it's bringing too much of the subtext to the forefront. Because the series was always kind of very subtle, but also kind of amusing in the way it was kind of... uh, Like, like there'd be random shots on boobs, basically, on character chess. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, Like... and it'd be like, okay, well that's stupid, but it's almost it's it's almost kind of funny at how blatantly pandering they're being. But that kind of brought it a step too far. Yeah. And that was the point where this started. I I just felt started to feel kind of gross watching the show. Mm-hmm. And I also do remember the entire uh, episode, like uh, because the entire episode was also just Corona lecturing the girls on bikes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like we basically just had like a like maybe not the entire episode, but there was a good five minutes there where all that was going on was that you had Corone on screen uh, explaining the different types of bikes. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's something that the show does a lot, where it seems as much interested in just talking about bikes as having a story. So one of the ways it does this is through its ending sequence where they have the show, they have the credits, and then after the credits, they have this other sequence called AOP. And I don't know if you could describe that (laughs) briefly for me. By all means. So basically the uh, the girls who do the... uh who do the opening for the show. And I assume probably also voice some characters in the show. I don't remember if they ever addressed that or not, but effectively, uh, there is a pop idol group called AOP that has live action segments at the very end of the show. And, uh, what happened? And so they basically go around and they, they're basically just lectures on like, you know, what to do, like what you need for a bike. And then, at first, that's what they start off as, and then they start exploring the town, and they start describing places around Kamakura, but the weird thing about that is that they get weirdly specific at times about, like, you know, you go to this restaurant, and you can get, you know, you can get, like, their famous bowl for only 1,100 yen. And it's like, this is basically just an ad at this point. It's an ad for several things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they start off being, again, they kind of start off being kind of funny because, you know, they're like, hey girl, hey people, guys, don't forget to wear a helmet before you go riding a bike because they protect your head. And also can be very fashionable. Hmm. Uh, but then they start getting kind of boring and weird. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and it's like, the problem with these, these AOP sections, outside of, you know, effectively being pointless, is <laughs> that they, uh, they just kind of take up time during the episode where the show need, somehow because the, the series drags out, like, the story so much and yet doesn't have enough time to tell its own stupid story. Well, right, yeah, so it, it takes about three minutes off the runtime for each episode to do this. Um, right. and you have to wonder for what was it a cost saving measure because they couldn't afford to animate it all and so they would just get some cheap live action stuff of a couple girls standing in a bike store learning how to sit um (laughs) which yeah guaranteed less expensive but but why though (laughs) you know it's not like it's not like these are famous pop idols either you know they're they're definitely in the up and coming variety so i i imagine it was a combination of cost saving and also, the, the show thought it was teaching people how to ride a bike, you know? Right. And that the story was just there to be an encouragement. But, I mean, I just... I, my hesitation is that a lot of these shows that are centered on, you know, groups of high school girls doing a sport together, 
even if they will say explicitly that they're trying to help girls, you know, learn how to bike or whatever it is, um, the implication is that it's mostly for men uh, who want to observe their waifus, you know, like, yeah. it's... And so it felt like it had a lot of mixed messages in that where you're then throwing in these girls who are literally teaching you how to ride a bike to it with no apparent ulterior motive. So I'm not sure if this show knows what it's doing or why. It's, I think, really my best concluding statement. Because <laughs> um, it, doesn't, it doesn't end, you know. It just sort of, like, yeah. drifts off. It has some stupid, random, misunderstanding side <laughs> plots. About, That's... like, people misunderstanding Sp- Sandy speaking in English. They think she's going to move back to America, and then and she just isn't. And that's the yeah. that's the end of the show. Yeah, she's going for, like, a week. But it's like, it'd be one thing if it, this was just like, okay, guys, see you next season or something like that. But no. Like, that's it. Well, yeah. That's, I kn- that's the end. They gave no indication that this show is coming back. Um, it has not seemed like it's captured the popular imagination, so I would be surprised if it came back. We'll watch it again if it does come back, but I'm kind of <laughs> crossing my fingers that it doesn't. Um, so yeah, o- overall, was, was, what would you, who would you recommend this show to, if anyone? Uh, I, I would say, like, Lonely Otaku, but I don't want to encourage them, so... Uh, but that's at the same time that's the only that's the only crowd that's really going to get anything out of the show yeah but that's the thing like we've all been lonely otaku at one time or another in our life (laughs) and i still wouldn't wish this on myself you know like (laughs) like there's better stuff out there for the lonely like you know this that might be the target audience but it's still gonna be uh pretty ineffective even for the target audience um i can't i can't think of anyone that i would say you should watch this show unless you're watching it for what not to do (laughs) yeah it's kind of an you it's kind of an interesting uh like study in how to not make an anime well yeah it's like how to not how to have a plot with no conflict uh right (laughs) <laughs> how to have a cast with no interesting characters or any development or any coherence um so yeah there's nothing really to recommend it um <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to be that blunt um i know some people like it because it's you know it's it's comfort food i guess yeah but there's nothing like if you're really so emotionally broken that you can't even deal with the with the idea of a conflict in a fictional story, mm-hmm. then I mean, I guess. But again, I would I would still recommend Long Riders over this for if you want that. Right. Or like there are still better shows that you can get that from. I don't know, like Azamanga Dayo. That's a pretty non-conflict show. That's a blast. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, there, there's there's a lot better out there. People might call this comfort food. I call it empty calories. Oh! What do you, oh. <laughs> 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 All right, I think we need to end it, Matt. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> I, there's nowhere to go for up from, uh, nowhere to go for down, but from here, uh, just hit the credits. Our logo design is by James Ratcliffe. The theme music is Fly High by Burnout Syndromes, covered and performed by Luke Bartka. You can follow Koshian Cast on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and our email is koshiancast at gmail.com. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. We will be back next week with the best and worst from the world of sports anime, and until then, keep training.